In this video, a multidisciplinary team from the Providence Cancer Institute in Portland, Oregon discusses the importance of the MDT to a successful lung cancer screening program. How was your multidisciplinary team established? We um, had a multidisciplinary team that was founded in 1999. It's the oldest non-university multidisciplinary team that I'm aware of in thoracic disease. Um, and when lung cancer screening started getting considered in 2000, in, in 2000 and all the way up to 2003, we already had the multidisciplinary team that was meeting weekly with, with high volume clinical decision making. If you're going to have a positive screen, you have to have some multidisciplinary way to evidence-based guideline triage it or if, you're, if there is no evidence in this particular case, then to decide what to do. For a diagnostic imaging department to perform lung cancer screening by themselves, it's virtually impossible. Because of the eligibility requirements, you have to have shared decision making. You have to provide smoking cessation materials. And diagnostic imaging department, it's difficult to do that. And so to have the companionship with the clinical subspecialists is crucial. And to have them as advocates, it's been just really what's driven and made the program the success that it is right now. How important was an MDT approach in the growth of your program? Our multi-specialty team has been absolutely critical for the growth of our program. And I believe that all of our different providers and our, our different members of that screening team would not be able to have a successful program without continuing to work together. That uh, has allowed for mutual support, that allows for that multi-specialty review. It allows for uh, a team-based approach to caring for patients and, and managing tremendous volumes of data with that that uh, are not simply data points. Those are our patient lives and those are patient outcomes. And if we are able to make positive impacts and manage uh, those findings and those screens in a way that continuously improves patient outcomes, then we have success. So if you only have surgeons screening everybody, well then everybody's gonna get a pulmonary lobectomy. Uh, if you only have radiation oncologists screening everybody, then everybody's gonna get stereotactic body radiotherapy. So we try to overcome that by not making any individual making those decisions. We do it in a multidisciplinary forum. So for example, every patient that we resect uh, at, uh, within our group and have pathologic diagnosis, we present every single one of those. Even if we know it's a, it's a pathologic stage 1A, there's really no other therapy called for, we present it and just have the whole team say, no other therapy, just oncologic surveillance. I think some of our success has to do with the fact that we have excellent subspecialists. In my opinion, if you don't have an adequate program with adequate radiologists, surgeons, pulmonary doctors, the whole crew, then there is potential for harm. The thoracic oncology program is the backbone of the lung cancer screening program at Providence because you have a room full of specialized expertise meeting twice a week. In addition, if you don't have someone who's going to notify the PCP that a patient is two months late for their CT scan, then it's not going to work. How does the MDT work together? The Monday morning meetings were where it all starts. When I came here 20 years ago, that was such an important contact point for everybody. That's where you got to know the oncologist, the radiologist, all the surgeons, and where there could be some excellent discussion. That's why I think we were ready to have this kind of a program. The primary reason why we've done well from a multidisciplinary standard is that group and that level of communication. So there's only about, I think, probably five or six radiologists between the two hospitals that interpret all the screens so that there is an even application of interpretation. So the, the interpretations are algorithmized and so having all the imaging funnel into the two tertiary care centers where the multidisciplinary thoracic disease conferences happen to meet weekly, uh, we decided early on as the leaders that were putting all this together, so since we need multidisciplinary recommendations coming from the uh, positive screens, 
we need to have a forum for that. So we already had our multidisciplinary conferences. Our, our, we were wary of using that because they're really busy conferences. Our multidisciplinary conference volume has between eight or 900 presentations a year. And for the last uh, four years, between 120 and 150 of those are actually lung cancer screening uh, presentations. The identification of a positive screen, a lung rads four, every one of those gets presented. So the coordinator makes sure that they end up on the multidisciplinary thoracic disease conference schedule. Once they get presented, they have to be documented and we have to include the coordinator with regard to the documentation and include the referring provider because they're the ones that are gonna be executing the recommendation. So if the recommendation is shorter interval imaging or it's just adhere to the normal lung cancer screening schedule, in other words, not too worrisome after all, we recommend screening again in one year or referral to pulmonology or thoracic surgery, we wanna make sure that the provider hears that directly from the program so once their conference presentation happens, there is designated people on the east side of the river. It's me and a pulmonologist, Dr. Skokan. On the west side of the river, it's two different pulmonologists. Generate a note for the chart, which is a template that we all agreed upon. It's only two paragraphs long. So it's got really only the essential facts and we relay it to the referring provider. One of the tasked physician leaders contacts the primary care provider to make sure that those clinical recommendations are understood by them. So we not only document it, we also communicate verbally with the referring physician. There is another handoff that actually needs to happen is, is that we need to make sure that the patient gets scheduled for the next lung cancer screen. So that's the decentralization pouring into the centralization and then pouring back out to the, to the um, referring providers. Dr. Zink, as a specialist in thoracic radiology, what would you say to other radiologists about the importance of the MDT to a successful screening program? I would tell them that, uh, first off, we can't do this alone. You, you, you need your multidisciplinary uh, specialists uh, to assist and be involved with the process. And you, you, you need to set very sort of strict policies and, and protocols for, uh, in, for infrastructure within radiology. Um, to make sure that uh, patients are getting screened appropriately, um, that the correct scan is being performed, that the correct follow-up is occurring, um, that it's truly a low-dose te technique. There's a lot of little details within radiology itself that, sh that's, that you really need to iron out. Can you explain more about the role of the program coordinator within the MDT? The program coordinator is really the hub of organization to shepherd patients and uh, information uh, through what can be a complicated system. That coordinator support for us has been really critical and in our opinion would be critical when people are planning how they would wish to conduct or structure a lung cancer screening program. It is also important that that coordinator feels like they are part of the team because they are an absolutely critical member of the team. It's important that that person not feel like they're just somebody who's managing paperwork or, or managing data points. Look for other episodes from TOPS that highlight practical perspectives in managing lung cancer.